Here we go. Uh, welcome back to Nick Lenz's Comic Corner. Classic size, non-classic. This is episode number 802 and double shot number 696. Two Marvel trades. Uh, one is an Avengers. The other one's going to be, uh, well, this video is going to be the first of three videos in a row featuring this particular character's trades. First, let's talk about this Avengers trade. This is Siege New Avengers. This book collects New Avengers Volume 1, Issues 61 and 64, New Avengers and Number 3, Dark Reign the List, New Avengers, and New Avengers Finale. Everything in here is written by Brian Michael Bendis. Mm -hmm. And each of these things have got different artists on it. The List issue, which is the first thing in here, along with the annual, the way you order this way this book is, is you have Dark Reign the List, Avengers, and Number 3, Issue 6164 60, of New Avengers and New Avengers Finale. Mm -hmm. That's pretty much how this works. The list of the artwork is done by Marco Davalovich. The annual is done by Matthew Mayhew. Mayhew. Um, 6162 is done by Stuart Emden. 6364 of New Avengers is done by Mike Bacone. Stuart Emden also does pretty much like all the cover art along with uh, Wade Von Gert. Von Badger and Dave McGee, I think it's pronounced the first name. The pencilers are Brian Hitch and Stuart Inman, but they're not the only artists. There's flashback artists. You have David Finch, who was the first artist in this run. Danny Minky, Frank DeMarto, Steve McNiven, Dexter Devines, Maury Hodwell, Oliver Capelli, John Dill, Mike Diodato Jr., Joe Panini of Panamo, Dave Stewart, Leno Yu, Mark Morales, Lauren Martin, Brian Hitch, Rain Burrito, Billy Tan, Brett, and Justin Puser. Now the way now the story for these issues are this. Dark Rain List picks up right where issue sixty left off of basically Clint going after Norman Osborne trying to kill him. He also, in the issue, has sex with his ex-wife, Mockingbird. Yes, he does. He goes out to Osborne, runs into Moonstone, and also, and thinking b because they're formerly a Thunderbolts, he's out. They basically, he'll let her just, he'll let her just basically just turn her back. But nope, she has like no choice because there's cameras everywhere. Mm -hmm. Yep, there are cameras everywhere. So yeah, he gets taken out, and then in the annual, believe it or not, because all of the men are busy, you have it. All female Teen Avengers comprised of, of this glad basically of Miss Marvel, Jessica Jones, who's gone by, who does this by costume, Miss Marvel, Jessica Jones, Spider Woman, and and Mockingbird. Yep, they all go after Clint. They rescue him while beating the crap out of his own Dark Avengers. And then when it comes to Siege issues, the first two issues is just Spider Woman and Spider Man being manipulated to beat the crap out of each other. By Mandrill for the first two issues. Oh, and also the cover. The cover that comes from issue 61. Excuse me, of uh, New Avengers. Which, those of you who've seen the classic World War One poster uh, of Uncle Sam, this basically is just a homage to that. And simply put, it just the whole point of the first two issues is basically what Spider Man and Spider Man were up to prior to. While everything else is going on there, and the last couple issues take place during the events of Siege, and basically, like they have, you have something you also you don't see in the main event. Captain America beating the crap out of Norman Osborn. Yep, and of course that leads into stuff with the finale with the hood and the mask being on the run. Do catch up with the finale is a giant size one shot. Yep, that basically is, an, is a long epilogue to this volume of New Avengers. Now I remember when this issue came out. I thought this is going to be the end of New Avengers, and basically with the regular Avengers coming coming back. Turns out I was completely wrong. What Ben just did, actually, he decided to restart the book to number one. I don't know why he did this for, but he did. And it lasted for 34 issues. Over the course of two, over the course of about three years. Yep. And of course, in the finale, the uh, something the Super Inspiration Act, which has been basically been part of the Marvel Comics at this point for three years, is thrown out. Yeah, it's thrown out, and Captain America takes over Norman Osborn's position as the America's top cop. Everyone's joking like, "Oh yeah, you're a new Norman Osborn." Cap's like, "Nope, 
I'm the new Nick Fury. And of course, Steve Rogers is not taking up the name Captain America. This, of course, is explained during the course of the event. Gives a shield to Bucky. And Bucky remains Captain America for one year before he gets apparently killed off and fear itself by, by Matt Fraction. Yep. Fantastic set of issues. Give this book a 9.5 out of 10. Yeah. I was talking to people about, uh, about Ben Ness at Comic Con. The guy is good when it comes to stuff like this. Yep. At least he gave Spider Man something to do uh, during the tie ins of of this book. And Spider Man does have a, does have a one shot tie in to the main event. And one thing I got to praise about, about this particular event is that there isn't like a boatload of tie ins like it was with Secret Invasion. I think Ben Ness must learn his lesson from that. So basically, this whole event just had the main miniseries. One miniseries of Titan Twit, a series of one shots, and mostly a handful of ongoing series. Basically, all four Avenger books have published at this point, which was New Avengers, Mighty Avengers, Dark Avengers, Avengers Initiative. Yeah, all four of these books are part of it, along with Thunderbolts, which kind of makes some sense. And New Mutants for like one issue, Dark Wolverine, and and Thor. Yeah. Thor was another one that basically tied into it. Yeah, Thor made sense because it's a Thor event, obviously. The Avengers books all make sense because they're part of it. Uh, the one-shots also make sense because it, Marvel kind of repeated this idea of giving people one-shots during an actual event. <laughs> they repeated this particular concept again with Shadowland, which now which came out about ha uh, se several months after this event concluded. Mm-hmm. Now, we're moving on to a book of a character that, um, this is we the first three videos in a row, focus on this character. We have Punisher. Yep, the Punisher. We're going to have first to three videos of this one because I, I got like four Punisher trades at Comic-Con. Next video is basically both Punisher trades. This one technically is the final trade to collect issues from Punisher War Journal Volume 2. Now, I have reviewed the first trade of this thing two years ago. Now, those of you curious, though, why did not get a chance to review volumes two through four prior to this because I don't have them and I found this at Comic-Con because I like Punisher so I figured I'd pick it up and this kind of is the start of Rick Remender's run yeah because he actually starts writing this book writing the character with toward the end of this particular run mm -hmm. I just want to make sure of that Now, in this book, there are only about just four issues in here. Basically, the last three issues of Punisher War Journal Volume 2 and the annual. The issues themselves, all three, are written by Matt Fraction. Rick Remender uh, co-writes issues 20, 24 and 25, which are tie-ins to Secret Invasion. I'm, okay, I have his up up here. Let's see. Actually, no, his run actually are just prior to this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it actually started just prior to this with issue 19, so it started with the previous arc. So this kind of wraps up his run on Punisher War Journal, but this kind of, in a way, is started his era for Punisher for the next few years. Mm -hmm. And simply put, the whole point of the last couple issues in here, they're just basically set up for the relaunch for Punisher, or simply call it Punisher because the series ended issue 26. Which, if you combine with how many issues published in the first volume for this series, which was 80 issues, that was 106 issues. And no, issue 20 was never renumbered to be issue 100 for this series. Never was. This is why I think I could have, but Marwa never did that. And the 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 issues themselves, the Secret Invasion tie-in issues, which are only just 24 and 25. Yep, the 26 is something else. The artwork for the Secret Vision tie-in issue is done by Howard Chankin. The issue 26, the artwork is done by Andy McDonald. And the Andy was not done by Matt Fraction. That's not a completely a different writer. That's done by Simon Spurrier, which I think this is the only time I can think of he's ever written The Punisher in uh, in any Mara book, because normally I focus on other characters. But this is the only Punisher book I can think of he's ever written. Word arc by Werther De Deloria, I think it's how pronounced the person's name. Yeah, the thing with those issues is just kind of follow up what happened in the previous one, which I have never viewed yet with the whole thing with Jigsaw. Yeah, Stuart Clarkey, who has been a supporting character in this book since the second arc of this run, and he basically took over the role of Microchip. 
and he's mecha, he's, he's basically mecha chipped throughout the majority of this run. And toward the end of this week, he puts on his Rampage costume. Yes, his Rampage costume. I'm thinking, though, know, Rampage. Who the heck is that? Some of you probably thinking that. Who the heck is that character? That was a character created for a book called Champions. Oh, do you mean the book created a couple years ago? No, not that book. I'm talking about the original Champions. Comprised of characters like Hercules, the Johnny Blaze Ghostwriter, Angel, uh, Archangel, Iceman, uh, Darkstar joined a group later, and and Black Widow. Yeah, Rampage was actually one of two villains, one, one of two original villains they fought. The other one was Swarm. Yeah. Rampage was probably the only big reoccurring villain they had because they only fought Swarm once. Rampage they fought several times throughout that run. Rampage has now popped up now and again over the years. But yeah. And... He basically gets turned into a new version of Jigsaw with Punisher ramming his head through a window. Kind of like what he did with the original Jigsaw. Um, Billy something, I don't remember his last name. He was kind of those Bill, Billy the Butte. Mm -hmm. The final issue is just the Christmas issue. Where he has interaction with Punisher interaction with the Rhino. Over people who got their hands on Stiltman's uh, equipment. Yeah, this is a loose follow-up to what happened back in issue one. Punisher killed the stealth man by firing a bazooka at his groin, and then basically, and then take a pistol and fire him in the head. This happened back in issue one. Mm -hmm. The annual is just a completely different story. Yep, the annual is. If I can look it up here, the an, I'm trying to remember because I just read this thing. The annual is. It's just a Punisher just trying to save people. It's just a random issue. It's nothing to do with the actual book itself. It's just him saving a bunch of kids. Yeah, and it has this very weird art style for Punisher. Yeah, this looks very weird. I don't think it's the artist, but yeah, this is weird even for Punisher. Mm -hmm. It's just him shooting a bunch of people. There's just like nothing to this issue at all. This is basically just a throwaway annual that the writer's... The Marvel probably thought, okay, let's just do this annual, and nothing much comes with it. At least in the case of the Punisher, War during the Shoes. Excuse me, those, these, those felt interesting stories. The annual is just a forgettable thing. And here's the thing. This issue came out roughly 10 years ago. Yes, it's been 10 years Secret Invasion happened. Um, the Secret Invasion issues are, Secret Invasion tie-in issues are really good. I love it. it. It's cool to see Punisher fighting a bunch of scrolls, uh, shooting a bunch of scrolls. Yeah, this is by far the only time I can think of he's ever fought aliens. Yeah, because I think of Punisher, what do you think of him fighting? Bad guys, and mostly criminals or gangsters, and him shooting them. Here, he basically kills aliens. Which probably gave Marvel the idea of him fighting aliens in Space Punisher. I have read that. It is one of the most bizarre Punisher books I have ever seen. Yeah, it's Punisher in a, a, in a space suit going around killing al alien ver space versions of popular Marvel characters like the Hulk, Green Goblin, stuff like that. Rhino was an interesting idea to throw him in here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, also in here uh, they had uh, the Living Laser, and it was one of the oh yeah they even threw in uh, in here. I forgot to mention her in here. Yeah, they threw in Lady Octopus. Yeah, I'm surprised Bendis brought her back. I mean, Slot brought back Stunner in, in, uh, in the pages for Spider-Man. Bendis brought back Lady Octopus. Those who familiar with her from the Clone Saga. Yeah, she's a daughter of, of, of a supporting character from Spider-Man. She took over as Dr. Octopus, but technically she was second Dr. Octopus. But once the original came back, she decided to call herself Lady Octopus. But as for this book, I'll give this book roughly a 9 out of 10. I'll give it a 9.5 because the annual was just so forgettable. Yeah, but at least the issues are in the regular issues are actually really good and they're interesting. Yep. Otherwise, though, that's it for this episode. Uh, stay tuned soon when I get a chance to finish the season up of the review of, of the ninth season of Gintama. Yep. But until I see you on the next video, bye.